dear friends in the lord al pilgrimage let your light shine is on the 19th day let us begin this prayer session in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all the theme of today's prayer for reflection is identification with jesus who identifies himself with the broken humanity in the second week we have experienced that in order to follow jesus we need to love him and in order to love him we need to know him this dynamic of knowing loving and following him led us to be placed with him now being placed with him we are invited to participate in his pain the passion and death to experience the depth of the redeeming love of the father that redeeming love of jesus manifests in the last supper where he sacramentally break his body and pours out his blood in the symbols of bread and wine and step by step accomplishes it in the reality of his suffering culminating in his death on the cross dear friends in the third week of this retreat the meditations on jesus's passion and death are made so as to help us in realizing the goal of the retreat that is finding god's will through a deeper union with jesus saint ignatius tells us in these meditations to ask for sorrow compassion and shame because the lord is going to his suffering for my sins each of these attitudes that is sorrow compassion and shame however must be understood correctly sadness is not a mood of depression but the painful awareness of our distorted personal life distorted family life distorted the world and our world where truth is crushed by lies and god's image seems to be erased from our human face in these meditations we are sad not only for the cruelties committed in jesus's trial but for what is taking place today in our relations family society in and in god's own church friends it would be entirely against the purpose of the spiritual exercises to reduce sorrow to feelings of sadness or compassion to a sense of pity for jesus in his sufferings jesus does not want to be pitied he freely enters his passion Ignatius tells us to contemplate Jesus who desire to suffer. Compassion means partaking in Jesus' sufferings, entering into his darkness and pain, which he shares with us, because he becomes a member of our human family. For Jesus, the passion is part and parcel of his struggle against the powers of darkness in the contemplation of jesus passion we are not an outside observer once again i wish to remind you dear friends that we have to realize that the lord is going to his suffering for our sins i am part of this sinful world 
in which Jesus was born and for which he was now to suffer. I too have allowed the powers of sin and selfishness to penetrate my life. I see with the shame in the ranks of those who under whatever disguises reject God's reign and resist Jesus. These meditations or prayers hours are meant to clarify and strengthen the decision against the sin in the first week and to confirm and deepen the option for Jesus against the powers of darkness in the second week. In the light of Jesus' life, of his relentless struggle which leads him into the solitude of the passion, I begin to see more clearly the conflict in my own life and the responsibility that I carry. Once I have made the option for Jesus, I also see the implications for myself to commit myself to follow Jesus Christ by pledging to share his life and destiny. Yes, Saint Peter, in the first letter, chapter 4, verses 13 would say, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Again, verse 16, we read, If anyone suffers as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but glorify God in that name. So, in this phase of spiritual exercises, we accompany Jesus into the mystery of human suffering. Our prayer may become more still and quiet as a result. We don't need to make any big promises or figure out answers to timeless existential questions. But the meaning of suffering. We just need to be present to Jesus and continue to have our hearts schooled about what compassion is all about. In this school of the heart, the cross becomes an extension of Jesus and his ministry of loving presence, a love that is with us to the very end. Dear friends, in this prayer hour, we ask a grace. Yes, I ask for what I desire, sorrow with Christ in sorrow. Broken spirit with Christ, so broken. Tears and interior suffering. We also keep in our heart a mantra for the day. St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, 16. A mantra keep on, read, keep on reciting. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. So, dear friends, we begin, as we begin to reflect the passion of our Lord, we must see all, all the areas of this event. During this contemplation, you may experience forgiveness, the healing, deliverance, liberation, all the more develop an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. So, for the first prayer hour, we may take the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 1 to 17 and to Matthew chapter 26 verses 17 to 30. Yes, Jesus' greatest sign of his love. The greatest sign of his love. Body broken, blood poured out. 
After the preparatory prayer, keep in your mind that you are participating in this event. After a sapiential reading of the gospel text, gospel passage, recall it. Relish the striking verse fixing your gaze on Jesus. And after some time, go into a deep silence with an awareness of the entire creation and the broken humanity. Therefore, it is very important that you must read the Bible passage meditatively and see the persons, listening to them, seeing what they are doing, considering how much Jesus suffers or desired to suffer considering his divinity that hides itself, considering how Jesus suffers all this for my sins. Reading this passage, we focus on Christ's total submission to the will of God. And through the contemplation of Jesus' passion and death, we are led to an awareness of how suffering can be utilized and transformed. Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 1 to 16 in this incident is one of the most tender in the Gospels. Washing his disciples' feet was for Jesus and for them an intimate moment of transparent vulnerability and surrender. As Jesus laid down his garments, he was deeply conscious of the nearness of the hour and which he would lay down his life for the, those he loved. Wrapping a towel around his waist in the manner of a slave, he, the master and lord, voluntarily submitted himself to the radicalness of a love that serves. In this reversal of roles, Jesus called his disciples also to become willing servants of love, even to the point of lying down their lives for others. Now let us go through the condemnation, how to go, how we go about it. Keeping in silence, after the reading, I see myself at the table with Jesus and his disciples. I see the room in which all are gathered. I see the table, its cloth, the cups and other dishes. I observe the disciples as they recline at a table, taking note of each individual's expression either joyous, fearful, or expectant, sad, etc. I listen attentively to each other and the words they utter, particularly to the words they words are spoken, love, kindness, grief, fear, deceit, etc. Aware of Jesus' approaching death, I focus my attention on him. I see his expression, the way he looks at his disciples. I allow myself to contemplate his face. I am particularly aware of feelings. I experience when I look into his face, I hear Jesus speaks. I watch and listen as he blesses and shares bread and wine with them and invites them to do this in memory of me. I am attentive to my feelings. Example, oh, confusion, blessing, feeling included or left out. I ask Jesus, what does this right mean? 
I allow myself to be quietly present as I receive Jesus' response with me. I see Jesus look over the gathered assembly. He calls forth a number of people. I hear him call the names of our friends, neighbors, etc. How they rise reluctantly or eagerly. Jesus kneels before me and begins to wash my feet. I am acutely aware of my feelings, perhaps of embarrassment or wonder and awe. Oh, tenderness. When Jesus has finished, he says to me, as I have done for you, go and do likewise for the others. I consider to whom will I go? How will the intimacy and love of Jesus for me spill over into my family? into my faith community, to others. Be aware of what is happening in you. As a conclusion of this contemplation, dear friends, go to our Lord and have a heartfelt conversation with him saying the prayer of Anima Christi. Soul of my Savior, sanctify me. After this prayer, just to go to Our Lady and say, Hail Mary, full of grace. Finally, go to the Father and say the Lord's Prayer, Our Master taught us, Our Father in Heaven. And dear friends, as we are told, do not forget to write the review of the prayer and journal. The feelings and insights that you have suffered Surfaced, that surfaced during your prayer. Finally, I just remind you, you can read uh, the gospel passages, John's cha gospel chapter 13, verses 1 to 18, Matthew's gospel chapter 26, uh, 17 to 46, and Mark's gospel chapter 14. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and I shall be, world without end. Amen.